Hello chess friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Here is another awesome chess study by Votawa. It's white to play and checkmate in five moves. And let's let us do a small activity while uh, before we solve this uh, study. Make a guess which one of the white piece is going to deliver the last checkmate, uh, the checkmate in the position. Is it the rook on e8, which is going to deliver the mate, the bishop on e2, maybe the knight on e2, maybe the bishop, or perhaps the rook on g2 is the one who's going to deliver the mate. I'm not sure. Make a guess and write uh, whatever you feel in the comments. Let's see how um, how accurately you can guess Because that's definitely going to be relevant and it's going to surprise you. It's going to leave you stunned. So uh, The easy part about this problem is this study is that every single move you have to threaten a checkmate and that kind of makes it Slightly more easier. The first move is going to be Bishop to d5 It's a bishop sacrifice. We are sacrificing. We are inviting him to capture. This comes with a very sim simple threat you would like to play the move rook a8, which is uh, again uh, provided the bishop supports the a8 square. We are threatening a checkmate, and that's why he is forced to capture bishop. Okay, now you play the move knight to d4. Again, this comes with a very strong threat. You want to play the move knight c6, followed by rook a8. After the king goes to a6, rook a8, rook a8 would be a checkmate, right? Basically, again, he's forced to capture. He does not have too many alternatives or any alternatives. You can for you can push the pawn, but in that case, rook a2 would be a mate. And that's why the pawn has to stay on f2. All right. This knight has to be captured then in that case as knight c6 is a big threat. So let's capture here. So you can see this pawn on e6 has now been um, shifted to d5. This one on e5 has been shifted to d4. Now let's follow the pattern, right? Let's play bishop to d6. Now this comes again with a threat. Bishop c5 check. And once the king goes to a6, there is rook a8 checkmate. So obviously he needs to capture this and that's why he takes it. So we have successfully shifted all the pawn on the e file to the d file, right? The e7 pawn goes to d6, the e6 pawn goes to d5 and the e5 pawn goes to d4. Beautiful. All right. What was the entire point of doing this? The entire point of doing this was the next move. It's simply phenomenal. The entire point of sacrificing three pieces in a row was to play the next move. Rook to e1. It was basically a line clearance tactic. It's phenomenal. All right, what's the threat of this move? The threat is very simply rook to a1, checkmate. The only way to stop it is to capture or promote. You can ca you can also promote on f1 square. In both cases, the result remains the same. Or you can also take on e1 as uh, we can see. But now the checkmate is going to be with rook to a2 and checkmate. This is simply phenomenal. It's one of the best line clearance tactics I have ever seen in my entire life. And look at this. Who would have guessed that it is it is a rook on g2 that's going to deliver the checkmate and for that we have to move mountains right we have to clear so much so many pieces bishop clears one pawn knight clears another one this bishop clears another one only to clear up the rook coming to e1 only to clear up the rook coming to a2 this is simply a masterpiece i have never seen such a brilliant um, uh, line clearance tactic ever in my life i think one of the most uh, beautiful ones uh, and definitely one of the best examples if you need to teach someone uh, what is line clearance. So I really found this uh, problem to be, the, this study to be stunning. Uh, I don't know what to say about this. The most beautiful part was it's a rook on g2 that was giving the checkmate because it was the most unlikely piece that uh, you couldn't think of that can give the mate. So really, really absolutely stunning chess composition. I specifically also like the idea of basically Clearing up, sacrificing three pieces over here, one on d6, one on d5, one on e5, simply to play the next move, rook to e1, simply to bring the rook to e1, and that too, simply to play rook a2 next. Simply stunning. I have no words for this composition, uh, this problem, this study. Sorry, sorry for that. I'm just used to saying study and um, the uh, composition. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and do subscribe uh, if you like this. Um, uh, study and how can not how can you not like this? It's too brilliant, too beautiful, too brilliant. I'm gonna come up with more uh, Votawa problems. Thanks to Cyrus Lakdawala for sharing me his book. You know he has made he has a uh, wrote this beautiful book, the Chess Wizardry of Votawa, which is a phenomenal book. I think um, the the compositions are just crazy. You have, you would have never seen such checkmating patterns ever in your life. You should definitely buy the book. It's really worth it. So. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Until next time. See you guys.